thank you all for for being here and thanks to uh, the organization for trust me trusting me and well let's, let's talk about phone about design uh, well i am ana cirujano ana kirujano for you <laughs> and i am from spain um, I am a business owner in Spain. I am a freelancer and designer. And I am in love with typography and with WordPress. It's just, you can see my contribution to WordPress. Um, so, um, one of the most important aspects of communicating with, with type is to establish a strong typographic uh, hierarchy. Visual hierarchy tells people people where to look and what things are most important. Look at the typography of these uh, well-designed uh, magazine covers. There are many different typefaces, different weights, uh, lighter and bolder, and different stretchers, um, condensed or expanded. These variations are used to create visual tension and hierarchy, control the pace, and guide your eye. Font var variations can also be used in order to add emphasis for smaller sizes, without reducing uh, legi legibility. These are some examples of printed design. But what happens with web design? Could we design something, something like this for a website? When you set a variation in a font, uh, the software uses a specific font file for, for that variation. A standard type family can have up to 20 or even more font files. On a website, using too many fonts can have a great impact on performance. In 2016, some of the biggest tech companies around the world signed off on a new standard that is part of an update to open type, variable fonts. A variable font is a single font that acts as many fonts. And this results in incredible performance benefits. Here is a website performance test of the Libre Franklin whole typeface family compared to a website using Libre Franklin variable font. The variable font results in fewer HTML requests, a smaller file size, so lar larger savings of downloaded data, and faster loading speed. Each variable font has different font variations defined by the font designer in the font file. There are five reserved or registered axes, weight, width, optical size, italic, and slant. Let's see the weight. Here you can see the difference between a full bold and a real bold. A full bold is created by the browser if the font file is missing, and a real bold is designed by the font designer. Using real weights is very important for a better legi legibility and also a greater beauty. These are the weights you can set using a standard font. Using variable fonts, you don't just have those individual master weights. You have access to all of the values in between. You can set 102 or 547 because the axis can be interpolated. So using CSS, we can animate these values to get a smooth transitions. I'm going to activate the video. Okay. I know Cyrillic and Russian, okay, maybe this one. Just click. Or Ok, 
okay, you can see the the axis weight uh, varying, okay, changing changing the the weight from 3050 to 1000, okay. It's an example. Okay, so now deactivate or yeah here. Okay, and okay. So let's see the width, the axis width. Uh, this is the width axis. Uh, just like weight, you can set and animate a range of values of width. Yeah. Okay, you can, you can see it uh, switching from 60, 60 and uh, 100, or, or width, condensing and expanding. Expand it. Okay. Okay. Mm, a variable font can contain many different axes that can do different things at the same time. In that graphic, you can you can see the letters, the characters changing uh, the width axis, axis and the weight axis at the same time. So let's see, optical size. Optical size is an axis to improve the legibility in smaller sizes. On the right, you can see the glyphs for bigger sizes with more co contrast and detail. On the left, for, for smaller sizes with less contrast and detail. And this is a, an example. More contrast and detail, and less contrast and detail, with just a one font file. Okay. Let's see the italic and slant axis. You can set a uh, more or less slanted text, and you can set italics. You can tell the difference between a slant, slanted text and uh, italic. Uh, you can see, for example, the A that is um, so different, or the P character that is so different. So it's not the same slanted text or italics, a real italic. So how can we use variable fonts in our WordPress websites? Uh, browser support is really good. Uh, actually, uh, with this level of support, we can use in variable form, fonts now, or at, at least experiment with them. Um, the way we use variable fonts in our CSS is pretty much the same as the way we use fonts now in our WordPress website. We set up the font using font face and we need to provide a fallback for older browsers. The main change is that we need to define a range of values. For example, we can define 200 to 600 for the font weight and out of this range uh, we can't de de declare any value. Once you've done that, uh, you declare the values for the properties as you usually do in CSS. You can uh, also use now um, Google Fonts, uh, although it's in beta version, but this is the way uh, you need to, to declare the, to import the font family and declare the range of values you can use. Um, in the presentation we are going to share with you, uh, you can find a link to more information about how, how you ha have to um, declare your CSS. And uh, as you know, uh, the new theme, a standard theme that is uh, included in the new WordPress version, uh, 5.3, that is about to, to be. Um, uh, is uh, including uh, variable fonts. So you can, uh, as you know, it's open source, it's WordPress, so you can 
check how it's uh, doing, how it's declaring, how it's using this interbar uh, variable form, um, and see how is uh, the code uh, made. Okay. All right. Okay, this is, um, these are all the values you can declare for, the con for controlling any of the standard axes, the five standard or registered axes. Let's see the custom axis. I have another video here. Okay. Um, the type designer can create custom axis that provide the developer with the power to control every aspect of a font. For example, this is a, for example, this is a custom axis for controlling the serif. You can create a font with more or less serif. I don't know if you can tell, but this uh, a font uh, switching from uh, serif and non-serif with just one file. Okay. Uh, here. Uh, this is another video. Okay. Uh, we could also change the height or depth of, of ascenders or descenders, as you can see in this video. Uh, custom axis can be created for controlling every little detail of the glyphs shape. Since we can create any shape in a font file, the font designer can also create something like this. Or, I'm sorry. or this. This is just one glyph, CSS, and a keyframe animation. Uh, let's see how we can make it. Okay. In this example, uh, we can see a variable font with the vectorial drawing of a horse with an axis called time and a keyframe animation in CSS. This is all the, call, the code we need to make this animation. But how is the font file made? Okay, next, yeah. This is the variable font file. We have just one glyph with 16 keyframes as intermediate masters. And that's it. The cover is a variable font that has 15 custom axes. The versatility of the cover is a good sample of the power of variable fonts. When using a variable font uh, with custom axes, it's important to specify every single axis in the variation settings, even if the value is zero. Let's go over some real examples of variable fonts. As we have solved the problem with performance uh, and we are not limited by technical issues, we don't have to worry about how many font variants are loading in the website. In this example, we can choose a typeface, dif a different typeface for headlines of good news and we can choose a different one for bad news. We can make the character change on hover Using variable fonts allows us to make things more readable on smaller or larger screens, like an Apple Watch, a projector, a laptop, or a phone. We can modify typography to be more readable and more legible, depending on the environment. In this example, when the screen, when the screen is smaller, the characters are narrower. We don't need to sacrifice design for performance. Creativity can, can start to determine 
our choices instead of technical limitations. Through interpolation, we can shift forward or backward smoothly to highlight pertinent information for, for a particular distant range. Uh, and uh, we can create sufficient uh, contrast based on the uh, user's environment. Maybe you can't see it, but uh, when it's not light, the the character changes to be more readable. Um, here you you have uh, some resources uh, for funding and testing variable funds. Um, access practices is for for funding and, and testing. Also, free fonts or play type detail is for um, you can write your custom text as you can see. Um, uh, this is another another resource for for testing funding, okay. And this is a very interesting website because you can just drop a font and. Um, get the information about that font, what uh, axes are designed for uh, by the uh, uh, font designer and how you can declare the CSS and also export the, the CSS to use that font. Um, I would uh, like to recommend you some people that are, that are experts in variable fonts that Jason Pamental, Pamental uh, he has a very good newsletter with the with the um, latest uh, news about variable fonts, and I recommend uh, you to to follow him. And also, Mandy Michael, uh, she has uh, a lot of good examples, uh, awesome exam examples, uh, with um, variable fonts, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, to sum up uh, some benefits of the benefits of using variable fonts. Um, using variable fonts help us improve the performance of our WordPress websites. We can create better experience for our users by making content more accessible. Even more, we can create a better way to communicate. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I encourage you to start using variable fonts. Спасибо. <laughs> <laughs>to the technical side. I mean, is it re, uh, like a single shape for each value of the axis? Yes, uh, you can see the font file. You need a, a specific software in order to design the, the font. Uh, yes, it's not actually uh, changing the shape. Yeah, it's having a, s a different shape, mm -hmm. uh, vector shape for each of these uh, frames, right? I mean, it, it means it, it would mean that it will increase the size of the font if you. Have yeah, it's, it's animation uh -huh. in CSS with keyframes. It's normal CSS animation. It's, it's a standard no, CSS. No, no, no. It, yeah, yeah. Understand. I mean, um, when you design this font to create those variations on the axis, do mm -hmm. you need to design a, a different uh, shape, vector shape for each of the? Uh, yeah, you have yeah, uh, so. you have 300 characters in just one font file. To, to draw mm, every shape you can imagine, or even uh, in colors, because we have um, color fonts uh, support, so support, and, and we can draw everything, everything we can imagine. Yeah, yeah we, using just one font file, 300 characters. 
Yeah. Yes, but or uh, or even if, more. if this font file actually uh, contains like a hundred uh, different shapes for a single letter, it means it will increase in the size, the file. Si file. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Thank you. Uh, what do you think, uh, what is the best way, for example, uh, for the font size units on the responsive? Can we, for example, uh, create font size depends on the user screen, like uh, with, with the min and max limits? Um, I don't know if I get your question, but um, what is the best unit for ah, the best units. Yeah, a good question. Uh, could be um, always uh, flexible, so you ha you have to you you should use uh, M or REM, R R E M, um, uh, because it's always de depending on the. Um, uh, with of the um, device, uh, you never um, set in pixels. The browsers um, uh, render in pixels, but you always uh, declare in em or rem. And there are that uh, units in um, relative to the viewport. But these units are not accessible. We cannot use REM or EM because it uh, depends on the uh, root HTML. And the uh, EM uh, depends on the, or REM, I don't remember, the, uh, the uh, parent. The parent, uh, yeah. Font size. So if mm -hmm. we don't change on responsive the root font size, we, uh, it doesn't affect any with the REM. So uh, what do you think? Maybe you have experience to use, uh, depends on the font on the window screen size, like width. If yeah, we change on the viewport, viewport units. Yeah, with M, you have um, to be more. Um, you need to pl plan, um, do a plan, good planification. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can use RAM, but uh, viewport units is not accessible because. Um, uh, when we are when we design or code uh, responsive websites, we are always um, have to be very um, care about. We have to care about uh, the user in 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 the last. Um, I don't know. The user can change the the font size in in the in in his or he, uh, her uh, browser. So if you set the font size depending on the width of the viewport, you are not respecting uh, respecting the user set. Yeah. So it's not it's not accessible. Um, you can think about uh, because media qu med media queries are not uh, working here because uh, think about a TV or a projector. You are setting maybe a media query with 1,900 pixels or uh, REM, but um, it's not the maximum size or the screen. Um, you don't know the, the maximum screen, so it's always better to to declare in in that uh, EM or REM. Thank you for this speech. This is the first time I hear about the variable fonts, but I'm a backend developer. But anyway, um, I have a question. How big is that file with the horse? Excuse me, how? What is the what is the file size of that file with the horse animation? If uh, it's possible, yeah. Um, I don't remember actually, but it's, it's not not too much. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet uh, this for you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I have uh, one small question. Uh, as a regular user of a website, I'm using some you know, Google new fonts. I'm happy. Users are not so happy because they need to wait while all those Google fonts are loading. So. Uh, does Google Font already support these variable fonts? And if yes, 
uh, what benefits I will get if I just e enable or use variable font without any other you know, styling or animation as you showed us? You can uh, use uh, Google Fonts, but there are some uh, just um, 10 or 12 uh, today uh, fonts now, Google Fonts. Uh, it's not many fonts now, and, uh, and there are in in beta version. But you can start experimenting with them. Um, the benefits uh, or using what what is your question exactly? Uh, so I'm asking if I will switch to variable font. Definitely, like absolutely. I will take the same one and yeah. just use the variable font version. What benefits yeah. uh, it gives? The benefits is uh, performance. Uh, the the main benefit is um, you can you can respect the shape of the character. As I, um, for example, the um, real italic. If you don't have the file uh, in your server or or making a request to Google Fonts to that specific variation for the italic, you are making a full italic, not real italic. So you are getting slant, just slant. But you need a real italics for a better user experience. And also the um, this optical size, you you can get the real shape of the letter uh, and ch changing depending on the screen. And this is automatic, um, and also the um, this one you you can you can use a real bold. It's not just a border in the letter, so it's the letter a bolder designed by the phone designer. So it's the shape is. Uh, better for legibility and for for getting the the beauty of the of the letter with the contrast and yeah it's for better user experience. Um, if you if you uh, get this one in now, uh, you you need a minimum three font files. But now you you can use just one font files with open type with more uh, tables and and you have um, all these benefits for the yeah. <laughs> thank you uh, is this your process? Uh, are you using a font uh, this uh, font sorry <laughs> um, font display CSS feature font displays yeah yes. um, what is the question about phone Are display? You using and yeah, which, type, um, which type you recommend? This is for um, when the browser is not um, get is yeah. not downloaded the font. Mm -hmm. You can um, uh, switch to swap mm -hmm. in order to uh, not showing the um, backup font, mm -hmm. a fallback font. Mm -hmm. So um, it depends on. If for you it's important the exactly typeface, or for you it's not so important. Uh, maybe you you can use um, serif or sans serif, mm -hmm. and the browser is uh, loading the font quickly mm -hmm. because it's, uh, the user have the font in in the in his bro or her browser browser. So if you if for you it's important. Um, because uh, you know that the the fonts ch uh, change their their size depending mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. what type face is. Mm -hmm. uh, you you can change this value mm -hmm. uh, depending is the most important for you or not. Mm -hmm. So better uh, to use uh, swap uh, depending if if you, if for you is important because mm -hmm. the typeface is changing your. Um, your design, mm -hmm. because because the the typeface is changing the the um, size of mm -hmm. the font, mm -hmm. 
or not, or for you it's not mm -hmm. important. Okay, thank you. But the user, uh, if the if the user get the text before, I thought they don't get your typeface. Okay, you you don't use a uh, swap, but it's if it's for you, if for you is important to not not show the text if you don't download it, um, have downloaded the the font file. Okay, you you. Just the other, the other option. Thank you.